Before proceeding with this video, you should open the definite integrals video capture sheet provided. You will be asked to complete tasks in the document throughout the video. You will want to have a ruler and pencil and some colored pencils or markers to complete this work. This section is called definite integrals. In the second video, we'll be defining a definite integral. But for now, we will be returning to the problem of finding the area under a velocity curve using the Riemann sums. The left sum and right sum that you computed last week are examples of Riemann sums. Let's look where we left off. The question posed was what might we do to get an even better approximation to the area under the curve? You may have answered on the discussion board, one way would be to record the velocity at shorter time intervals, giving us more values in our table. However, the shorter the time intervals and the more intervals there are, the more time consuming the calculations. In the following example, we'll see how we can use technology to do the calculations for us. Let's look at example one, finding the distance traveled when velocity varies. A particle starts at x equals zero and moves along the x-axis with the velocity v of t equals t squared for time t is greater than or equal to zero. What is the distance traveled over three seconds? The distance the particle traveled can be modeled using an applet by Justin T. As t, t increases, the particle moves along the x-axis. At t equals 1, the particle is at x equals 1 third. At t equals 2, the particle is at x equals 2 and 2 thirds. Then when t is 3 seconds, the particle's distance traveled is 9. Let's look at this example and use the left rectangular approximation method, or a left sum, to approximate the distance the particle traveled. We are going to start by using time intervals of one second. First, we should graph v of t equals t squared, then draw in three rectangles of equal width like the picture shown. Copy the graph on your capture sheet. Also take a moment to calculate the area of each rectangle shown and find the total left rectangular approximation. Pause the video to do so. Your areas for the three rectangles should have been zero, one, and four. The left rectangular approximation method is equal to five. Pause the video and make any corrections to your work. Let's look at this example and use the right rectangular approximation method or right sums to approximate the distance the particle traveled. First, we should graph v of t equals t squared, then draw in three rectangles of equal width like the picture shown. Copy the graph on your capture sheet. Also take a moment to calculate the area of each rectangle shown and find the total right rectangular approximation. Pause the video to do so. Your areas for the three rectangles should have been one, four, nine. The right rectangular approximation method is equal to 14. Pause the video and make any corrections to your work. Let's look at both the left and right rectangular methods and compare them. We found the area of the left rectangular approximation to be five. Would this approximation be an underestimate or overestimate? Because the rectangles do not completely fill the area under the curve, the left sum would be an underestimate. We found the area of the right rectangular approximation to be 14.
Would this approximation be an underestimate or overestimate? Because the rectangles overfill the area under the curve, the left sum would be an overestimate. Both of these are good estimates, but since one is an underestimate and the other an overestimate, a better estimate may be the average. Pause the video to find the average of the two estimates and record it on your capture sheet. The average is 19 halves or 9.5. Pause the video and make any corrections to your estimate. What would happen if we made more rectangles? Let's look at the distance the particle traveled if we use six rectangles and the left rectangular approximation method. The graph would look like the one shown. The width of the rectangles are now half a unit instead of one unit. We are now going to go to the GeoBra Example 1 app. You can open the app yourself now and follow along or open it after watching the video. It should look similar to the one shown when you open it. Currently, the app has LRAM selected with N equals 6 and X1 equals 0 and X2 equal to 3. N is the number of rectangles with X1 being where the rectangles start, the start and value of T, and X2 is where the rectangles end, the stop and value of T. For this example, we are not going to change X1 and X2 since the time the particle moves does not change. However, we are eventually going to change N by moving the circle to the left and the right as shown here. When I move it to the right, N increases. When I move it to the left, N decreases. If you are following along, make sure you put N back to six after moving it. Hopefully you noticed in the top left-hand corner, the LRAM approximation changed when you changed N. When I moved it back to six, LRAM is about 6.875. The work for finding the left rectangular approximation method is shown here with it equaling 6.875. Pause the video to record any information that you want on your capture sheet. Now let's look at the distance the particle traveled if we use six rectangles in the right rectangular approximation method. The graph would look like the one shown. The width of the rectangles are still half a unit instead of one unit. We are now going to go to the GeoBra Example 1 app. Currently the app has LRAM selected, with n equals six and x1 equal to zero and x2 equal to three. If you are following along, uncheck LRAM and check RRAM. Hopefully you will notice in the top left-hand corner, RRAM is about 11.375. The work for finding the RRAM is shown here with it equal in 11.375. Pause the video to record any information that you want on your capture sheet. Complete the table shown below on your capture sheet using the GeoBra applet. I'm going to leave you with a question to think about. What do you notice about the rectangular approximations as n increases? Enter your answer in the first discussion board.